It has been a painfully slow month for Turo. Cars are sitting for longer periods of time, the daily trip price is decreasing, and hosts are making less and less money. So then that begs the question of, is this cause for concern? Well, today we're gonna to be talking about just that, and I'm gonna be answering the question of, is Turo dying? Should we be worried? And is this slow period that so many hosts are currently experiencing, is it a reason to be concerned and be worried about the fate of Turo and your income as a Turo host? But that's not it. We'll also be talking about how to increase your booking so that you still get rentals even whenever things are a bit slower. So let's get started. What's up you guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you are having a wonderful day. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. And today, like I said in the intro, we're gonna be talking about whether or not you should be concerned about the fact that it's been very slow this month in January. But before we dive in, if you guys could do me a huge favor and if you could hit the like button and hit the notification bell for the YouTube algorithm, I would greatly appreciate it. This helps my channel grow because it helps that YouTube know that you guys are enjoying my content and thus YouTube pushes my content out to a new audience. Additionally, I do have a car sharing Masterclass. This teaches you how to start a car sharing business with the same business model I use. If you use the code January, you can get $25 off that course. The link is down in the description below. And last but not least, I also have a private group on Patreon. If you're interested in joining that private group, we have weekly live streams. That is going to be down in the description below as well. Now with all of that out of the way, let's dig into what I actually want to talk about in this video, which is whether or not we should be concerned with how slow it's been this month, January, 2022. Now we really can't answer that question question without going over a few key points and a few key factors that we have to keep in mind. These factors could definitely be some of the reasons as to why you may be a bit slower today than you were a couple of weeks ago or a couple of months ago. First is the time of the year. At the end of the day, whether or not we want to admit it, Turo is cyclical and different months and different weeks and different times of the year are going to give you different business. The fact is with January, everybody's kind of in a state of limbo. People are returning back to work after being on holiday. People aren't traveling a ton because because they're getting back into routine. They're not traveling for work. They're not traveling for vacation. A lot of times the month of January is a low spending month because people blew their entire budget for Christmas. As a result, they're cutting back on their spending so they're less apt to rent a car. All these factors could be key factors as to why January has been slow for you. The cyclical aspects of consumer habits are incredibly important and they absolutely affect your Turo fleet and the utilization of your Turo fleet. And thus they definitely have an impact on how much you're making as a Turo host. The next factor, and one that I actually don't see spoken about that often, but I think it is so incredibly important, is perspective. The reality is perspective is incredibly important whenever we're talking about our Turo fleet. Because if business is booming one week and then the next it is completely dead, of course that is going to feel worse than if business is just consistently average. Going from one extreme to the other is always going to feel vastly different than if you're just very consistent. Now, when this comes into play with the month of January is because of the fact that November and December are incredibly busy, and January is oftentimes very slow. If we were to compare January to the month of August or September, for example, you probably wouldn't notice as much of a stark difference, but because we're comparing January to December, it feels like it's much slower than it actually is. But this comparison can oftentimes be a bit toxic because you are comparing one extreme to the other. I think whenever you're comparing your month of January, you shouldn't compare it to how November and December was. You should instead compare it to how January of last year was or January the year before. You can't compare apples to oranges. You have to compare apples to apples. And because December and November are so incredibly busy and January is historically a bit slow and may feel a bit more painful than it actually is. Perspective is incredibly important and it's something that you absolutely should keep in mind. And lastly, and probably the most painful aspect to keep into account is oversaturation. The reality is Turo is becoming a little bit oversaturated in certain markets, as Turo is becoming more and more mainstream, as more people are becoming aware of the service, and as schmucks like me on the internet are talking about Turo on a daily and weekly basis, more people are joining the platform as hosts. And because of this, more and more platforms are available for guests to rent. And if the host count is growing at a faster rate than the guest count, then you're of course going to see a limited amount of bookings because there are simply too many cars to go around. But whenever things start to settle, whenever markets become a bit slower, this oversaturation becomes painfully obvious and you all of a sudden become aware of how many cars there are in your market. This of course can be a factor as to why things may be a bit slower for you than it was last month or even last year. But don't worry, I have some tips on how you can increase your own bookings. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Ultimately, the point that I'm trying to get to here is the fact that I don't think Turo's dying. I don't think Turo's dead. I don't think there is any cause for concern. 
I just simply think, and there's a lot of evidence to show that this is just a cyclical pattern with the Turo business model. January is slow and there's a lot of different reasons as to why. In fact, let's dig into some data that I think supports this quite well. If we look at Google Trends here on my screen, you can see how many people have Googled the term Turo over the last five years. And you can see here that in January of 2017, volume was quite low, but there was a steady increase over the next couple of years. Then really from 2018 until 2020, it was pretty flat. There was a slight increase, slight decrease, but nothing super substantial. But then of course the pandemic hit and we see a drastic decrease, which is totally expected given that time of year. And then there is another increase, things start leveling off once again. And then in 2021, things start absolutely exploding for Turo. And that's where Turo demand really started to see increases like never before. And you can see here that in the month of June, so like the summer of 2021, Demand, search results, interest in Turo was at a five-year high. Then it dipped down a bit after the summer, again, which is totally expected as people returned to school, as lockdown restrictions started to lift up, as people started to go back into their day-to-day -day routine. And then really since August, it's been pretty flatlined. It's been pretty steady and interest hasn't dramatically increased or decreased since the summer of 2021. Now, what this data shows you is that Turo isn't dying. In fact, I would argue that they're doing quite well and interest is still pretty high. Yeah, it's not as high as it was a month ago or it's not as high as it was over the summer, but it's absolutely still there. And your demand as a Turo host is down, not because of the fact that Turo is dying or Turo is struggling, but it is instead because of the three points we spoke about earlier. It being a cyclical cycle and consumer habits changing in the month of January, your perspective as a host going from extreme highs to extreme lows and also, of course, the oversaturation of the Turo market and the fact that more and more hosts are joining. Not only all of these factors, but as I spoke about in my video that I published this past Friday, Turo recently announced that they were filing for an IPO and they announced and released their S1 filing, which gave a behind the curtain view of the Turo business and how they are functioning on a day-to-day -day basis. I think it's safe to say that while Turo is filing their IPO and while they're gearing up to go public, nothing dramatic is going to happen with Turo. In fact, I would argue that right now is probably the safest time to be a Turo host because they are not going to want to make waves with the Turo community. They're not going to want to shake anything up. They want to keep people happy. They want to keep people steady. That way, when they go public, they have an optimal performance. So now that we've gone over the fact that Turo is not dead, they're not dying, and they are probably perfectly fine, now let's talk about what you can do as a Turo host to increase your own bookings. Because just because Turo is fine doesn't necessarily mean that you as a Turo host are fine. And if you have a car that went from being booked out on a daily basis to having no future rentals in 2022, you may be concerned. So the very first thing that you should look at is your trip price. This is something that absolutely will dictate whether or not you get bookings. The reality is that in November, and December, you can rent your car for a higher daily trip price than you can in the month of January. And if you're somebody who has not adjusted your pricing, I highly encourage you to do so. The rule of thumb that I've always followed is to either increase or decrease my pricing in five to 10% increments and see how that affects my bookings. If I decrease my pricing by 10% and I still don't see any bookings, then I'll decrease it again by 10% and then again and again and again until I get the amount of bookings that I want. If I end up getting a ton of bookings at a low price, then I'll go backwards and increase the price once again until I just get a steady flow of rentals. You don't wanna price your car too low because then you're leaving money on the table, but you don't wanna price it too high because then people just won't book with you. Another great thing you can do is look and see what other people with similar cars in your market are pricing their cars at. Don't only look at your exact make and model, but look at similar and comparable models as well. And I would encourage you to look at maybe pricing either the same price as them or even a dollar or two lower. This means that you're not leaving money on the table, but you are giving yourself that competitive edge that could end up winning you a booking over your competition. Another thing that you could look at doing is make sure that all of your photos are really good, really clean, really crisp, and they actually show what car you have. I can't tell you how many Turo listings I see of cars that are just taken in a parking lot, like next to a bunch of cars. They take photos of the interior of the car while the car is dirty. I just simply do not understand it. There are a lot of great ways that you can take great photos without spending any money to do so. Number one, make sure your car is clean. Make sure it's vacuum wiped down. There's not hair or food or crumbs anywhere. 
Make sure the exterior of the car is clean as well. You can pay for a $7 car wash and your car will look great for photos. And then number three, go to a scenic spot. It doesn't have to be something that's super professional, but even a nice aesthetic building, a park, somewhere that looks good and has good lighting. And then from there, you can take photos on your phone and you could even do an optional step of hiring somebody on Fiverr to edit your photo for you. For example, HP and I did this with our Maserati. We really wanted the car to stand out from the competition. So we took the photos with our iPhone. We then sent them over to a freelancer on Fiverr and paid $10 to have the photos edited. In my opinion, I think that that went a long way, especially in the luxury car market. Now you can look at doing that. You absolutely don't have to, but it's definitely something that you could explore. Either way though, whether you go the route of getting a professional editor or just using your iPhone photos, getting some clean, crisp photos of your clean car will really go a long way in increasing your rentals, especially if you're somebody that didn't have great photos beforehand. And lastly, make sure that your trip listing is as flexible as possible. So having advance notice turn to the minimal amount that you feel comfortable with. I have mine set to one hour. Making sure that you have instant booking turned on. This means that a guest can just simply rent your car. You don't need to approve them. If you're somebody who has the ability to do remote key exchanges. I highly encourage you to look into that. That way you can offer pickup and returns at any time of the day, regardless of whether it's 2 a.m. or 6 o'clock in the morning. And additionally, making sure that you're just responsive to your guests as well. All of these things will go a really long way in increasing your bookings, making sure that your car is ranking higher and higher with the Turo algorithm, and that will really help you make more money. I've spoken about this in a couple of videos, but over the summer, I spoke with the Turo representative that gave me a behind the scenes view of their Turo algorithm them and he let me know a few of the things that the algorithm thinks about whenever it's ranking cars and search results. And having delivery and offering that feature is something it looks for. Having good photos, five-star reviews is another key factor, as well as instant booking. All of these things are things that the Turo algorithm looks for whenever it's pushing certain cars to guests that are looking for a vehicle. This is, of course, something that's gonna be especially important if you're somebody that's in an oversaturated market. With that being said, you guys, I wanted to make this video because I feel like every time there's a lull in the Turo market and Turo demand, there's a lot of alarm bells that are ringing in people's minds. People are concerned that they've been like shadow banned from Turo, that Turo is dying, that hosts are not going to ever make the same amount of money that they once made. But the reality is January is just slow. I mean, it's been slow for me. It's been slow for a bunch of other Turo hosts throughout the country and things will inevitably begin to pick up soon once people return back into their schedule, once people get back into the groove. And of course, once people start to travel again, there is absolutely no part of me that's concerned about how slow it's been. And I don't think you should be concerned either. But if you're somebody who wants to increase your bookings, and I think all of the tips that I've outlined in this video will help you do so. Like always, you guys, if you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, I would love to hear it. So make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video.